Oh, no rock and roll. <laughs> no you two over there. Or anything. No, it's been very, very quiet. We've been uh, actually we haven't had a lot of entertainment, so there hasn't been a lot of. Well, it sounds like you're running emergency. a good operation. Yep. Uh, Mr. Martin, any questions about petitioners? Nope. Uh, Mr. Igo, any question about petitioners? None. Mr. Nicanello, any question <laughs> about petitioners? I did hear some Charlie Daniels the other day from my house. I didn't know if that was from the <laughs> golf course. No. Okay, no, no question. I think that I came from lower. <laughs> came from the old drive-in site. Okay. You believe How it about is. you, Ms. Britt? Any no questions? questions? Mr. Chairman. Is there anyone in our audience who would care to speak concerning this petition, 4741? If so, please come to that microphone. So that's either in favor or against. Seeing no one, we now close it to, board, uh, to public discussion. Open it up to board uh, discussion and deliberations. And we asked you for an annual uh, review. Is there a need for another annual review in anyone's mind? It's a decision. So can we agree that, uh, thank you, you've passed your annual review, and I don't remember exactly how it was drafted. Let's just see if we need to amend the prior decision. It was set for two annual reviews. Oh, two. Yes, sir. <coughs> oh. Well, you're late. <laughs> you're a day late getting here. It was Mrs. Clark's fault. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can forgive that. So we do need one more because that's the way the decision was crafted. I'm sorry to inconvenience everybody. I know you're riding a great ship over there and you're doing a great job for the town. But we need to see you next year as well. Okay? okay. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank, Thank you very much. Hey, all of our petitions this evening go this Very fast. <laughs> Petition 4812, Timothy Chapasco of 589 West Yarmouth Road in West Yarmouth, Massachusetts, property located in the zoning district R40. This evening our applicant seeks a special permit under 202.5, uh, subparagraph 5 for garage space 4 or storage of more than three vehicles. You need to come to this table if you're, if you're the petitioner. You know why? Because we have cameras that are interested in making sure they see what you have to say as you present this. I don't want you to get nervous about those cameras. Oh, it's all right. All right, good. Also five. Uh, so why don't you tell us all about your petition? How we do this is we ask you to tell us about what it is you're looking for us to uh, consider. Okay, I have okay. the permits currently for a two-car garage, and I'm looking to put two more garage spaces in the house. Uh -huh. um, simply. So do we have plans or something yeah. about that? You have plans that I've submitted. I submitted both. I submitted the plans that show the house with two windows on the gable side, and then you have the plans that have the single 16-foot garage door, and that's what I'm looking to do. All right. Ms. Britt, any questions of our petitioner? It, only if you would just explain a little bit, because I'm having a hard time visualizing how you're going to put the two extra spaces in. Could you just explain that a little bit for me? On the, on the plans that you have. All right, which ones now? I'll step over here. I'll step over here and I'll show you these. No, no, oh, you know, no, we can't do that. Oh, no? Mr. Chair, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not kidding about it. We actually have to oh, go home and watch and this, this and they get very upset with us if we don't do okay, right. high order and rules. So on so you need to sit there and you can use that easel if you'd like to, if you want to. You've got to carry your microphone with you at all times and you're welcome to point out anything you'd like. Yeah, if, would you like me to, to show you from? Yes, I would. Okay. Just carry the whole thing right over? Uh, well, that one, I'm not sure it's going to go. Why don't you bring the easel to you? Oh, okay. I'm sure Mr. Tardiff moved it over there for easy access yes. when he wants to use it. <laughs> there we go. People get proprietary around here, you know. Now, I, if you would, I don't expect you to hold the mic, but if you'd pull it over toward you yep. and tell us which sheet are you referring to. Okay, so on your original copy of the plan. Which sheet are you referring to? Uh, it's two of eight. Okay, thank you. Okay. Now we all have it. So on that plan, there are two windows. There's a set of stairs and the siding, and that's where I wanted to put the 16-foot garage door, which is the gable end of the house facing my neighbor's property. 
that a drive under? No, it's a okay. ground level. It's ground level, okay. It does, you know, there is a room above it. Mm -hmm. is not the same port on a slab. Or port on a slab. That's, that's, that's what he's proposing right here. Yeah, what's the up there? So where are the four, you, four go you also have a set of plans that shows the garage that has been approved, a separate garage out back. Separate plans. Yeah. Who, who approved the plans for the separate building out back? The building department. And there's no need for relief in conjunction with that building. There is no need for relief for that. And that that building has what two two car garage. Two and, car garage. And a building and a habitable space above. No habitable space. No plumbing. No habitable space. Okay. And what's this current space right now? Uh, just a. Basically, just a storage room. Okay. I apologize, Ms. Britta. Please, you go so right That's all right. right. Continue, <coughs> Mr. Chairman. What, what, what do you need the two extra spots for, then? Um, just because I have four cars. <coughs> you know, I've got four as well, and I'm, I'd love to figure out how I could get them all indoors. It is, especially in the, in the bad weather. It's nice to have them. Yeah. Inside. Any other questions, Mr. Mr. Nicanello? Yes, good evening. Thank you. Um, so as I drove by, I saw the garage structure being built, yep. and the house is going to be built later on? or you're The house, yes, the house is going to be built later on. The foundation's already in. Yeah, oh, the foundation's in. I saw the lot cleared and the, the structure for the garage, which is nice. Um, so you have four cars that are just regular Volkswagens? or you know, I have a... Do you? A little classic car, do you? I, I actually do. Good. Okay. Camaro. Yeah, okay. What year? 79. <laughs> I've got a 67. Okay. Uh, I'll trade. And a, and a 17, <laughs> the anniversary edition. A ratio. Uh, you'd probably win. Okay. So you have plenty of uh, plenty of space. It's just because of our bylaw with the cars. That's why you're here tonight. Correct. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Igo. Um, this gable, uh, I'm, I'm looking at this plant right here. Okay. It shows two cars, two cars. Are you proposing how many garage doors, how many garage spaces are you going to have total? Four. Four. Four total, three garage doors. Four total, three garage doors. Yeah, on the house, I'm putting a 16-foot door. So you, are you considering that a single car garage? No, two. It's based on the square footage. It's two car garage. Okay, now I'm looking at this plan you submitted. I've got two car here, <coughs> two car here. Um, I That's can't I see answer. that. There is, a, is that 7A and 7B? Mm -hmm. So it's in the house attached there, and this is the other one. Right, well, where's, the, where's the gable? Okay. We'll do this? Yeah. <clears throat> are you are you coming through here with that garage? Or is it coming it's this a, way? It's a side entry, right? It's a side entry. House, yeah. house garage. The it's a side entry right. for this. This would be so the gable end. Do, mm -hmm. out. And this is the side view. But it doesn't look like it's <clears> laid out that way on the plan. You have, uh, is that 7A and 7B that yep. you're looking at? Okay, so there is a 7B, which is a proposed house. I've, there's two lots there. 7B is future. Okay, so. Okay, so I think well, that's what you're looking at. Well, so everything's is this on. It's all on 7A, these two buildings? Those two buildings are on. I'm just trying to understand it. I'm looking at that. I'm looking. Are you putting a garage in a gable? Am I looking well, at the that gable garage? side of the house I'm looking at. Okay. And where on this plan are you putting that on a gable? Uh, I, I can't see that plan from here. here. You come take I'll this come from it. me and then explain that because okay. this is what we all have in our packet. Okay. I have two 7Bs. Oh, I see. 7A, 7B. Yeah. Okay. See here? Yep. Yep. Those are two of the same. Okay. So on this plan. Mm hmm. What you have is the house facing the road. This is the driveway. Mm -hmm. This is the gable end. Yeah. And that's what I'm proposing to put the 16-foot door there. Okay. And then this one has a garage door here and then facing the house. 
the way you have that laid out, it looks like you're coming from this way. Okay. That's, it doesn't matter to me. I just want to understand it. Right. That's so that, that would be the driveway, and that's how the, the <coughs> door would be set. And that's where it would be right there. That's fine. That's all okay. I have. I couldn't see that from not a, not that a, distance. Yeah. Okay. That's all I had. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Martin. <laughs> Um, I, I've got <clears throat> I know aesthetics aren't really that important in one sense, but considering we're look, being looked at to give relief for more cars, I, I like to think that this is going to fit in as well as possible with the neighborhood and the and other homes in the area. I, I get some issues with I guess the the addition to the house um, is going to be a flat r rubber roof in terms of this this section it actually has a slight pitch okay i mean i just think the aesthetics to both that and the separate building which appears to be a metal building no no okay no, my, it says my, metal siding on here there is actually the siding for the <coughs> garage out back yep and the house are going to be the same they're an engineered clapboard okay wood clapboard so it's not metal. It's metal siding. It, it does say metal siding. That was something that my architect wanted me to look into, and he left it on the plan for part of it. Um, but that's not the decision that right. it is going to be clapboard. And that, that building as well has a nearly flat roof, just a slight pitch with a rubber roof, right? It's got a two and a half pitch. Okay. It does have a pitch. <clears throat> And it's got to reverse in the front. Yep. I, I, you know, my, my personal opinion, and again, if uh, when we're looking for relief under these circumstances, I think uh, the proposed develop, uh, development or whatever uh, should be fitting in with a residential character as much as possible. I, uh, we got a bunch of walls with no windows. We got siding. I got a real funny looking window in in the front of the detached garage um i i just uh and maybe aesthetics only goes so far but i think if we're looking for this relief for more garage space than would be normal then <clears throat> i'd love it to be more you know a regular pitch and cedar shingles and proper windows that are uh are more in keeping with uh with the neighborhood than what i'm seeing on these plans most of the back garage will be blocked by the house yeah i do see when that yeah when it's built <clears throat> you you actually wouldn't see those is there any way you consider doing a more conventional roof line to both both the addition and to the into the garage back garage is already up <clears throat> well the second garage is already up second garage is already up guess i should have driven by yeah um, second right garage now is it's up. the only garage right yeah. Yeah. that's right that's yeah. the only garage that's that's already up <clears throat> Engineering wise, I'd have to re engineer the entire house to make a change. Is it well wooded? What's the visibility of it? It is of well this wooded. One? I okay. you're gonna leave the front pretty well wooded? Oh, I'm leaving it all. Okay. What's down now is down the old I think I have a few trees left to take down on the right side of the property for the septic system, but that's it. What's down now is down. Um and then along the driveway, there will be more plantings going up the right side of the driveway. I just had to take it out for the, the water service. So that's why that's wider on the inside of those trees. But the, the rear garage, I did it. The reason why I put the garage door all the way to the right facing the house so it wouldn't be seen, and the same thing with the window structure, it can't be seen from the road once the house is built. <clears throat> and you wouldn't give any would you give any consideration to the flat or nearly flat rubber roof on the on the house addition or the garage and house addition so you're building a, a room above that as well right yeah there's yeah. going to be a right. it's going to be a living space above can't, that can't that somehow <clears throat> work into the, the the same kind of pitch as you have on the on the main house or the the, the main body of the existing house the, on this the plan? main body of the existing house is more like a colonial yeah it, it is um, and I did do that to to fit in, and it is all clapboard. Okay. Um, and then there is the the foyer sticks out three feet, actually three feet on one side and one foot on the other side, just to give it a little bit of character in the front. Okay, good. Um, 
and, and I did go with the flat roof, but I did go on the front of the garage and around the gable side of the garage in both the first floor and the second floor, I did put an overhang to be able to put lighting and break the front of the house up. So a lot of thought went into <coughs> designing and, and the And this shows like a horizontal clapboard upstairs and a vertical uh, for the first floor, is that what's still planned or? There is on the bottom of the first floor and on the foyer, there is gonna be, it's a very subtle vertical um, so I can put paint and do contrast because I'm gonna do a dark gray house and then a light gray foyer area just to give it uh, contrast as far as the paint goes. So you'll see shades of different colors there. Okay, that's all, that's all I have for now. So I have a, qu a couple. Uh, you know, I, I like Mr. Martin agree with the idea that uh, flat roofs on new construction is something we don't like to see unless it's some commercial project. That it's, and even then we ask to screen it in some fashion, you know, make it more palatable. And I know you're not here for us to talk about any zoning relief, say for garage space, but this is our opportunity to try to address that issue. Um, I mean, I, I don't get it even quite from the, from the depictions. Uh, we're gonna have a, a, a usual pitch, what's the pitch on this? Six. Six. So, and then, and then we're looking at the flat roof here. It just doesn't seem to be, I mean, it isn't how I'd wanna see it, that's for sure, but. How does this face, uh, you're next to Chris Kenny's house, right? He's behind me. And how would this face his house, and how far are you from him? I, I'm having a little hard time. Do you have a certified plot plan? I do. Yeah, we, we have, and we have, you do have, have 40 feet to his sideline and then the house the closest to the neighbor to the whatever I'm going to call it north because it's to the top of the plan we don't yeah. even have a compass point on the plan uh, is 28 uh, 29 feet so it's 69 feet uh, but uh, at least to that structure correct and then on the other side I don't know what's there there's nothing showing me what's there so what's on your other side Where I own that property it's an it's a vacant well that's lot. okay but somebody may own it in the in the future that's right. not you so what's on that property to the to the side where the, this garage is going to be facing? Oh, there is a house on that side where the garage is going to be facing there is a there is a house there how far is it from the property line do you know from the property line 45 or 50 feet well, you've got 42 on yours, so that uh, you're telling me the existing structure to the, now we'll call it south, I'm gonna call it south, okay? Yeah, on the uh, left-hand side. That has, that has about 45 feet to the sideline? At where their house meets, yes, yes 45, yeah. and then with a garage, and then 42, 42. And then another 42 to you. Yep. <coughs> okay. <coughs> it's a pretty good distance, and that's woods along that common line there, is it? It's, yeah, it's a combination wooded. of mostly wooded. Yep. And how about your front yard? Mostly All the natural wooded. Ve vegetation you're gonna leave, say for the leaching field that you need to put in? I'm leaving, most of the leach field is cleared. All right, and it's to the front of the house, though? It's to the front of the house, yes. Well, I like what you did with the rear building and screening it from the street, I, because I, I, I don't, I'll tell you, if you needed relief, from us on that building, I'd have a lot to say about it because it certainly isn't in keeping with the character of the neighborhood. Um, relative to the, I guess I gotta figure out whether or not that I think that greatly impacts my view of four cars. I think everybody would love to have a four car garage. So, Does anyone in our audience care to speak in favor of this petition? If so, please come to the microphone and let us hear what you have to say. Seeing none, does anyone so care to speak in opposition to the petition? And seeing none, we now close it to public commentary on it and open it up to board discussion and deliberation. Mr. Martin, you and I at least are in somewhat of agreement that we don't like flat roofs. I've got a flat roof on a commercial building in Hyannis and yeah. I think it looks awful. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'd love to see the petitioner being willing to make this look better. I just, I, I hate to bring aesthetics into it, but it's not an attractive looking addition um, or that section of the house. Yeah, the rest of the house is fine. Um, uh, well, the, the issue is the 
the special permit for the extra garage. And I, and I understand yeah. your... Well, we understand how. We yeah. understand But if we're giving that, we'd and like it to look as nice as possible, I right. guess is what we're trying and to say. <coughs> when the house is done, the house was designed by a professional in the house... You, you can build it whether, you, whether we grant you relief from the garage or not. We understand that. We understand why you're here tonight. Right. But what's being said to you is... Could you conceive of increasing the some put some pitch on that roof? But you could you could make it the same pitch as the, the house. You just can't. is it wider than the house? I don't even see a set. I mean, it's is not. This, do you consider it's not this a working set of blueprints right here? Do you have another set of these somewhere? Uh, a little easier to read. It's it's set back a foot from the entry foyer, which sticks out. So you could put a. Uh, I mean, I could meet with my engineer and see if we can. I think I'd like to see that, and I, I do think this is within our purview because where right. he wants this is where Mr. he wants his garage. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question? Why is this an engineering issue and not a design issue? Why do you Sorry? keep? You said you had to check with your engineer. Why is this an engineering issue and not a design? To change issue? the roof line it becomes an engineering issue. Yeah. Why did you choose a flat roof? The design that I came up with. Well, now you just used the word design. Is it was it driven by engineering or was it driven by design? The design is then engineered to be built. So you wanted a flat roof to begin with. I did. Okay. Why? It's just your preference. Right. It is my preference, and that is actually what I'm going to go for. It's, it's not a change that I am going to make. Okay. I am just to be. Okay. Okay. I think the trim that's set, and I think the colors that are set, I think it will be a very nice house for West Yarmouth. So is this, is that the elevation that faces West Yarmouth Road? That is the elevation that faces West Yarmouth Road. Oh, okay. This top, the first, first drawing. Correct. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Martin? Or any other comments you want to make? Um, <clears throat> I'm also a little concerned about this. And you have an outside stairway that goes up to that yep. area over the garage. Covered stairway. Is the idea to make an in-law apartment up there or something? Or? You can access it from inside the house also. Uh, not according to your plan. Oh, you mean from the garage? From the garage. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but the rec room upstairs doesn't connect with the uh, up, the rest of the upstairs. No, but it goes. So you have a, uh, you've got a full bath up there as well. Yep. Have these plans, you said these plans have been approved by the building department? They have been approved as a four bedroom house. Uh, I don't have anything else right now. Mr. Igo, do you have anything else? Nope. Mr. McAnell, any comments? Mr. Ryan, are there any questions or comments you'd like to make? Mr. Chairman. No. Okay, so. Please. Please. I do have some concerns with the flat roof, however. We are looking at this from the West Yarmouth side, West Yarmouth Road side, which is the most concerning elevation that I have. When I look at this plan, I'm not sure how <coughs> out of uh, character it's really going to look from West Yarmouth Road because what's, what else you're going to see is pretty much conforms the siding but for the vertical. But you've kind of explained that to us. That's a bit of a modern look in your colors right. and everything. So. Um, I think if we looked at this from the side view, if it was from West Yarmouth Road, I probably would have a little bit more problem with it. And I do think that we could vote on it based upon that roof line, because that's where the garage is going. Um, but uh, I mean, I, I think it's going to be OK. I don't think the extra two car garage is going to make a difference. It's a huge lot out there. I think Chris has four cars over in his yard, too, doesn't he? Uh, five. Does he get five car garage over there? Okay. Well, I mean, you know, big lots, you know, you get plenty of room. That's all right. 
I don't really have a problem with, you know, multiple garages. I'm a firm believer if you get the room, why not? And I can park everything inside, yeah. which is the yeah. ideal situation. So I, I think he does meet the criteria under the bylaw. I would recommend the board support this petition, and I uh, plan on supporting it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to just jump in and say I, I think that we have to, you know, we're, we're keeping the eye on the ball, but we always love to see what we can do to improve what we believe is an aesthetic, and, and you, you can build this house whether we give you permission here or not this evening, so you don't need our approval for the building of the, law, uh, of the structure. Um, I do think that the facing of the garage door to the side as opposed to the front certainly is helpful to my thoughts on it. I'd love to see a pitch there, but you know, I understand the expense and all of that as well. And, and as it relates solely to the relief that's being granted, I think the size of this lot is certain com certainly compelling that four cars stored on it is not excessive. I also think, quite honestly, that your location of that existing freestanding two-car garage structure behind this helps. I don't like your roof line, but you got it. What can I say? You're entitled to it. So I think I can support it as well. But is anybody prepared to make a motion? Anybody else want to say anything? Pardon me? Yeah, I already said that. Is there something else that you, either one of you want? No, I, I was just going to say I, I like the fact that he's doing the th only three doors, which makes it look good about four. And uh, it's far enough back from the house and the way the house is situated. And uh, when we get 85 inches of snow on that flat roof, good luck to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't use a shovel. You'll prefer, perforate that rubber. Believe me, I, I, I learned the hard way, okay? So. That's all I have to say. Thank you. So anybody prepared to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion that we approve the uh, special permit as requested with no conditions. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second the motion. Mr. Igo has made a motion to approve without condition. Mr. Nicanello has seconded that. Does the board care to have any discussion on the motion before proceeding to a vote? All those in favor of that motion, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those uh, opposed? Nay. Carries four to one. Aye with reservations. I, I heard that delay, and I was wondering there from, I, I heard it I on both ends. <laughs> I have my hearing aids in this night, so, so I can also hear what isn't said. Yeah. Uh, uh, oops, it was, I think, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was correspondence from? First one. Yeah, that's right. On, on the Board of Health? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's fine. That, there was no issue of Board of Health. So, so what happens is a decision will be drafted. It gets filed with the town clerk's office. Uh, uh, 20 days must elapse after that's filed, assuming there no, be no appeal from any abutter or other interested party, interested as defined by law. You would then have that grant of special permit. That special permit needs to be brought to the Registry of Deeds and Barnstable, recorded, and you need to pr return proof of recordation back to Ms. Clark sitting at my left. Okay? Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah, Thank good luck you. with the house. Think about a pitch, Drew, for you. You <laughs> might have to go for a snowstorm. <laughs> so it brings us to our next petition, 4813 JCW Enterprises, Inc., uh, concerning property located at 308 and 310 Old Main Street in South Yarmouth. That property is in an RS40 zoning district, and our applicant seeks to modify an existing variance in decision 3534 or in the alternative for the issuance of a new variance from, from bylaw 202.5, use table A6, to allow for public events at the property. Good evening. Good evening. Now, for the record, I'm Paul Tartif. I'm an attorney in Yarmouth Port, and uh, seated with me are uh, Jeff and Carol Watson. That's the J, the C, and the W in JCW Enterprises, I'm guessing. Um, and we, as you indicated, we are seeking to either amend existing variants 3534 um, uh, or for a new variance to permit public events at the property. 
Uh, this property is in the RS40 uh, zoning district and is improved with two detached structures. The first is a uh, two-story, three-bedroom building, which is right on Old Main Street. Uh, and a second one is a nine-bedroom, two-story structure. And they're collectively utilized as the Captain Ferris house, bed, and breakfast. Both structures date back to um, 1845. Mm -hmm. Both buildings were owned and operated as part of the Bass River Savings Bank back in the day. Uh, which now houses the Cultural Center of Cape Cod. It's the bank there when I was a kid. There you go. Uh, these were, I think, the offices for the bank. Um, but they haven't been used as private residences in recent memory. Um, the B&B operation consists of year-round rentals of 10 guest rooms with owner's quarters consisting of two bedrooms. Uh, the lot uh, consists of 57,037 square feet, 1.3 acres about. It has frontage on Old Main Street to the southeast and Mill Lane on the southwest. Uh, property also has a 36 vehicle parking area for its guests, uh, as well as gardens, a courtyard, formal dining room, parlor. Um, the current use began um, uh, approximately 1992 with the issuance of variance number 2941. Uh, and it was modified in 1999 to allow for the expansion of the owner's quarters at that time. Uh, several conditions were imposed in 1992 and again uh, extended in 1999. Um, there are no plans to change either the structure, either structure, uh, uh, externally or internally. So we're just looking for a, an additional use of the property. Uh, the applicants took title in 2016, so they've been in occupancy for the last three winters. Uh, based on their revenue at the time, they can represent to the board that 79% of their annual revenue is based on B&B occupancy from May through September, a five-month period, 79% for five months. Uh, Ms. Watson identified a need for off-season opportunities for the town of Yarmouth and for which she, uh, she believes she can fill the void with a non-B&B use at her property. Uh, the proposal is to establish a tea parlor during the slower B&B months. Uh, from October through April. The use would be active from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. on Wednesdays through Sundays um, from November through April. And although labeled a tea parlor, it's going to be, um, be able to use it for uh, host family gatherings, uh, book clubs, birthday celebrations, bridal, baby showers, uh, after church brunch, other holiday events, and, and the like. Capacity would be capped at 22 guests uh, with 10 uh, guests in the dining room and 12 in the courtyard. The parlor would serve as sort of a waiting area um, uh, for if there was an, uh, that many people there that day. Uh, decision 2941 and uh, again decision 3534 condition the use of the dining room quote solely for the use of the guests. Which condition is that? Number three. Um, although the applicant has complied with this condition, the tea parlor is proposed to be open to the public, and it's this condition that we are seeking to modify. Um, the best, I think the best argument is to go back to the 1992 decision, which made the following variance findings, which I think really are still apply and you know, a little bit more apropos. Based on the facts and history of the site, uh, and on the basis of the conditions imposed, the majority of the board, are, the board members are satisfied that this, there are special circumstances relative to these structures which would cause substantial hardship to the petitioners <coughs> where the law is to be strictly enforced. The historic structures are not now reasonably or advantageously suited to a single-family residential use. Now, this is the part that really applies. The proposed use will be more consistent with the neighborhood than the prior uses and more closely appro approximate the uses allowed in the district while preserving the dwellings and the character of the neighborhood. Accordingly, the relief can be granted without either a substantial detriment to the public good or nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent and purposes of the bylaw. Um, I think Mrs. Watson has clearly, clearly demonstrated the substantial hardship for those off-season months that we all sort of um, suffer through in the winter. Um, and I think that it's also the nature of the B and B model itself that makes it difficult uh, by not affecting the zoning district in which it's located. I think that they're really one of the, the few in that part of the town. I also don't believe there's going to be any substantial detriment to the public good, nor um, would relief derogate from the intent and purposes of the bylaw. What's interesting about this request uh, is the nature of the use and the nature of the neighborhood itself 
which makes it unique. Although being in a residential zoning district, the property is surrounded by non-residential uses. Uh, the list of surrounding uses includes the Cultural Center and the Owls Club, which is one building now, a vacant parking lot across the street, the gas station and the Dunkin' Donuts, I guess that'd be some competition for the tea parlor. Uh, the Olympia Fish House, South Yarmouth United Methodist Church, South Yarmouth Library, an empty parking lot to the rear, and Doyle's Restaurant. Um, Mill Lane, which is where you can find the nearest residence to this, is approximately, with the lane itself, approximately 150 feet away from the nearest building on that property. Can we get you a, a petition as to improve Mill Lane so it's easier passage? Uh, no. <laughs> um, but I think the strongest uh, argument in favor of this use is found in a letter that you have from Robert Nash from the Cultural Center. Uh, he really summed it up well. A use such as this helps create a village center. I'll, I'll read them into the record. Okay. Um, but I just think it has, I just think all of those reasons listed in his letter really are, um, are telling. Um, so as far as the variance is concerned, uh, either a modification or a new variance I think is appropriate. I think the even better argument is that these people have a common vigilance license, which by law must be open to the public. They cannot reject people from the public well, as the long public as you have a common vigilance license. They're guests too, though. I mean, they are part of the public. True. So, um, you know, and I think that that's uh, th what we're doing is just seeking to modify a variance condition. There were several variance conditions issued that allowed the variance in the first place. I think if you look at what the variance is used for currently, um, this use is not very different from that in, in any way. I think the foot traffic's the same. The, the numbers that they're proposing are the same. The uses would be limited in hours, days, months. Um, I think that the same conditions without this one would still apply. I don't think that you're gonna have any problem in the, uh, the B and B months, we'll call them, with people walking in off the street because I think those are reserved for their guests and that's how they want to keep it. If you've never been to the Captain Ferris house, I brought some pictures because this place is a showpiece. Um, and this is, um, I think this is your Magnificent. Courtyard. Yeah, the yeah. courtyard here uh, with glass above. I want to show you the dining room, elegant. Um, I think this use would be perfect. I think that all of the neighbor letters that you have besides the cultural center letter are also um, echo that point that this is perfect for the neighborhood. So for those reasons, we hope that you would uh, allow for some sort of uh, relief in this case. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Britta, any questions about just, petition? Just one, and it's a technical question, Mr. Chairman, I, and maybe for the board as opposed to the witnesses. Is, is public events, is that a defined term anywhere, or do we just? Yeah, why don't you direct us to it? I'm, I'm not aware of yeah, public. I don't know if we have an I don't idea. think it's we do. defined in our zoning bylaw. No, it's, it's, it's used f um, for purposes of calculating uh, um, the, the number of people that can be in a particular space at any point, but I don't, s I never found a use called public use unless you want to use um, municipal uses, but I don't, I don't find one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But with the with the conditions you're putting on, it's 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 going to be limited to those right. the conditions. It in, is in terms of it is function. Yeah. of the yeah. correct limited. Okay. Uh, no, that was all, Mr. Chairman. I like the idea. I think it's a terrific, uh, obviously, an opportunity in the off season to have some life and vitality. I think it's a terrific idea. I was just concerned that we we make sure that we're consistent with broad enough well, that we're capturing the public, you know, what they're doing in that public events definition. Well, we're going to define it very closely in a decision, right? Mm -hmm. We will. And so, Mr. Nicanello, do you have a question? Uh, more of a comment. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a beautiful structure. You guys maintain the property immaculate. I drive around it all the time. I run by it once in a while when I'm out jogging. Um, I, I think it's going to be a great spot to have tea and talk about tornadoes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if you have a generator, but you may want to, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but besides that, um, the neighbors all seem to be for it, and uh, you're keeping with the consistency of the, uh, uh, the nature of the house. Um, I, I, I wish you good luck. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I don't know, maybe, maybe they're, uh, you know, things in my eyes, what do they call those? 
floaters. It's the cologne. You want to have variety? <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead, Ms. Diago. Any questions about petitioners? Uh, yes. Uh, now, we talked about before the type of uh, events you'd have. Can you tell me a little bit about that, the, the events that you were planning? Sure. So one of the things we talked about was book club. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, we're right next to the library, yep. so it's a perfect venue for a book club. We're right next to many churches, mm -hmm. so after church tea parlors. Mm -hmm. We're right across from the cultural center. There's an opportunity to partner and do special, you know, um, tea parties, not parties, but tea gatherings mm -hmm. for the for or after their, venue, their events. Um, so it's things like that. Um, birthday celebrations, showers. Now, what would be the total or maximum number of people that you would have at any one of your events? We are looking at 22 because 22. That's, the ex uh, that's the existing yeah. seating that we have for our guests. And, and what were the months of operation that you were proposing? We're looking at the off season, so November through April. Mm -hmm. So you that's want to November back it up 1. A little from November? Do you want to go to October 10? You want to go like right after the long weekend? We can do that in yeah. October. Yeah. yeah oh, okay. So we'll you'd want to go to the end of April. Yes. yes. April is very slow from a. What about May? May can be somewhat slow as well. Why don't we go up until the morning? Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. Memorial Day. Yeah. So what if we went say October 12th weekend? We can pick a date somewhere around there through Memorial Day. How about just the Monday after Columbus, uh, Tuesday after Columbus Day? Yes, that's perfect. Oh, okay. Tuesday after Columbus Day, and then uh, up till Memorial Day weekend. And a maximum number of guests at 22. And uh, what would be your proposed hours of operation for those? One to four. One to four? Mm -hmm. It's an afternoon tea. Uh, that restricts you a little bit. You're in the off season. We could, I would be amenable to expanding it more than that. I mean, what if, would, if you have a birthday party, for instance, you know, you might have young kids, they might want to get there a little earlier. Why don't okay. we say, uh, how about 11 to five or 11 to six? 12? Yeah, they can do whatever six. they want, but he's just making a suggestion. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. I'll say 12 to 6. I mean, we can always do the subject to review, so if they yeah. need to tweak it a little bit. So we do 12 to 6. Okay. Sounds like he's interested in this tea. It gives him time to set up and clean up and all that. It's the sandwiches that he likes. <laughs> they need set up time and he break can't down get and all that. And somebody might want to <laughs> hang around a little while. We don't anticipate it's going to be. Do you serve alcohol there? No. 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 Okay. Um, I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> that that was really the only question that I had. I mean, I'd make a comment that pretty much dovetails the rest of the board, which I've said. I mean, I think it's an appropriate request here in the area that you're in. You're going to draw naturally from the places that you said, mm -hmm. the, the proposal, the things that you want to do. Uh, the only thing that I think might be a little different is if you did something like a birthday party, but, you know, so what? Bring the kids over. You got plenty of people around there anyway. There's plenty of people over the library. There's plenty of people at the cultural center all the time. It's a somewhat busy area at times, but it's a quiet area. Even when you have a lot of people over there, it never gets loud. Oh. So um, I think it's a great idea myself. I, I do think they meet the criteria for the variance. In terms of the what I think we should do, I think we should just modify the uh, existing right. variance. Yeah. Instead we of proposed new Wednesdays. And we can discuss Sundays, that later, but go all the time. that would be okay. my thoughts. But that's all I had for now. Good, Thank Mr. You. Martin. Uh, I would echo those same thoughts. That uh, it's a it's a wonderful property that you take impeccable care of, and and uh, having a tea room is sounds like a wonderful idea, and um, hopefully it'll get well. Uh, well received by uh, and and busy, and I think it's uh, it's, a, it's a great idea. It just needs to be defined in terms of what you were talking about, relevant to hours and numbers and so forth and so on. And uh, you got plenty of parking there, and and uh, sounds like a great use. I, I'm very much in favor of it as well. So I, remind me, were you asking for this to be seven days a week? 
Well, I, I had stated uh, limited, but if, if we could at least have that option to open up the days that... I'm just asking what you were suggesting. If we could do seven days, that'd be fine. If As long as those hours are... We're going to maintain those hours for sure, and I don't think well, they want to do it seven I, days. You know, personally, I think you're limiting yourself from one to four in a way that you might even then not be successful in your endeavor, and we want you to be successful in your endeavor, you know? The more money we can generate... Uh, uh, for patrons, uh, uh, for uh, businesses in this town, is is one of our very uh, stated goals. By the, uh, uh, you know, if you interpret uh, what the goals of the selectmen are, it's to assist business people in being successful. So, I mean, to me, it's it's I, I, it's it's one of the properties. I I don't live far from you, mm -hmm. and it's one of the properties. Every time my wife go and I go by, she says to me, "Why didn't you get me that house?" <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I, I just don't have a need for that many bedrooms. I'm afraid. <laughs> so with just the two of us and, and a couple of dogs, but uh, they they sleep on the floor. So um, you know, it's it's just a magnificent property. You maintain it just exquisitely. Um, there is not a bad thing about that property or the caretakers of it who are the two of you. So wonderful, wonderful job. We have correspondence, and I'm going to uh, re refer to it. The, uh, uh, the health department weighs in but truly uh, doesn't have a lot to say. Uh, full review of the project by the health department will be required uh, prior to final approval, including a review of proposed menu for each public event. Um, I, I mean, I, that's between you and the Board of Health. We can't really weigh in on that. And personally, I, I don't know how you're going to give them a proposed menu uh, for a, a birthday party on a Saturday and a, and a, uh, a tea party on a Sunday. So um, I, I wouldn't suggest that we consider making the Board of Health uh, stipulations part of our decision. I would not. I would not. Right. Because I think, quite frankly, I think it's just way too restrictive. But that's between them and the Board of Health. Right. Board of Health can rule whatever they want. They're not dependent on us, and we're not dependent upon them. We try to stay in conformity. But in this instance, having reviewed what they have to say, I just don't understand how anybody could live up to what they're asking you to do, which is to, if you make the slightest change in a menu, you've got to let them know. Before every event, you've got to let them know. I mean, to me, I don't see it. Uh, we have some mail. July 12, 2019 is a uh, letter from Robert M. Nash, Executive Director of the Cultural Center, and a wonderful facility that is to the town that I hope everybody gets to use and enjoy. I'm writing to support the request of this uh, petitioner for a variance to host a tea party in the off-season. Initiatives such as this are of great value to both residents and visitors in the community. They provide high-quality engagement and help to create a village center of walkable attractions. And that's what we've been trying to do down this end of town for the last 20-plus years. Uh, nice to see. Uh, so they enhance the reputation of the town as a place that appeals to diverse interests in all seasons. The Captain Farris House has been a great asset to the town, offering stellar accommodations in a historic setting. The addition of a tea parlor will add a layer of interest to the area without replicating what is already offered by other merchants, and I believe that's true. It also offers up, uh, opportunities for partnership with the other entities, including the Cultural Center, of course, <laughs> and we therefore strongly encourage it. We have uh, from Sally Godinaga. I'm sorry if Sally's here or if she's listening. I apologize. Sally Godagno, is that how you understand that's pronounced? And Rob Murray, who say we wish to offer our support of a variance request for a tea house parlor submitted to the board uh, of the cap uh, by the captain, uh, Farris House. Jeff and Carol Watson are warm and friendly professionals who took time to hand deliver a letter of butters detailing their request. If only more petitioners did that. Mm -hmm. uh, and to discuss the their vision of the teas they propose hosting during the slowest season. As proprietors, Jeff and Ca uh, Carol conduct their business in a trouble-free, dignified manner at all times. Their property's grounds are meticulously maintained, and the inn's architectural complements the historical nature of the Bass River neighborhood while reflecting the sensibilities of its residents. We have owned a home on Aiken Avenue since 1985 and have found fond memories of meeting visitors to the Captain Isaiah House 
bed and breakfast down through the years. Guest of our late, ne uh, late next door neighbors, Marge and Alvin Fallows. The Captain Ferris house is no less a welcome neighbor. I guess you changed the name when you bought it, huh? Oh, okay. No, it's a different form. We believe that the tea house parlor will be an attraction to many groups, including those who frequent the South Yarmouth Library and Cultural Center. Already we know of one local book group <laughs> whose members are anticipating and joining the charming surroundings, welcoming atmosphere, and British tea menu that will help stimulate future literary discussions, <laughs> I, I suppose. <laughs> Maybe we'll keep them awake as you talk about you know, <laughs> war and remembrance, who knows. Uh, dear members, uh, this is a letter from Barbara Adams. We are unable to attend the July 25, 19, uh, 2019 public hearing. Our names are Charles and Barbara Adams, and we live at 289 Old Main Street. We'd like to speak in support of Jeff, Jeff and Carol Watson. They run that Captain Ferris house in a very professional manner, and also keep their grounds and gardens looking like a showpiece. The Watsons also contribute to the community. Every year they open their beautiful home to those who attend the annual cookie stroll to raise funds for the South Yarmouth Library. They are also members of the Historic Society of Old Yarmouth. I guess you guys are here for a while, huh? Three years. Three years. No, no, but you're going to stay here for a while. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, good. good. We, <laughs> we highly support their efforts to expand their business. Well, volunteerism is a very important thing. Every member on this board is a volunteer. Mm -hmm. We do it because we love uh, our town yeah. and uh, like to see other people volunteering for those sorts of things. We highly support their efforts to expand their business with a tea room in the winter. They are very responsible people who conduct whatever they do with professionalism and uh, dignity. What, did you write those letters for those people? No. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna say, wow, everyone is pros and it's just wonderful, <coughs> and it, you know. I have one additional, I don't know. Does anyone in our audience care to speak <laughs> in favor of this petition? If so, come to the microphone, let's hear what you have to say. And it, would you tell us who you are, please? My name is Brian Lawson. I live Hi, at Brian. 290, good, good evening. Uh, I live at 290 Old Main, actually three houses away across from the Adams. Um, these guys have just brought new life to this building, and um, we just really want to see them go. And everybody is saying the same thing. So, uh, yeah, totally a approve of this. What a wonderful thing you come out and speak, uh, Thank you know, uh, concerning it, whether it's in favor or against. Doesn't matter to me. I'm just mm -hmm. thankful people get involved in government every once in a while. Anyone else care to speak in favor of this? Well, look at we have a lineup tonight. <laughs> uh, Who's good this? evening. Uh, my name is Richard Pelletier. I live at uh, 231 Mill Lane since uh, 1996, <coughs> and uh, I can't support this enough. I think uh, putting any limitations on on the timing would be a mistake. I think we need to let them spread their wings and do what they do. Um, it's been nothing but a plus to our neighborhood. Um, I would probably think I'm the closest resident. Uh, we face the south of uh, the south side of your building. And um, I don't want to be repetitive. Uh, you read the letters, and uh, I would like to see it go from 10 so people can show up early, <clears throat> do the proper preparations for their party, um, stay till 6, uh, they could go to 11. Um, it's a town bylaw, right? So uh, I think we should let them do their thing. Um, and, and they do everything well. Um, as far as Mill Lane, it did used to be one <laughs> way, as I remember. It's what? Mill Lane did used to be one way. Well, I use it two ways, so please. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it still goes both ways now, but it, it used to have a sign out there a long time ago. Um, two ways, no, it was one way. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was, it was. And um, either way, um, I hope you guys give them <coughs> exactly what they're looking for and more. Thanks. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else care to speak in favor of this petition? Very well said, too. Thank you, both people that had something to say. Anyone care to speak in opposition to this petition? Seeing none, we now close it to public commentary on the petition. We open up the board discussion and deliberations. Um, you know, Ms. Britta, I'm going to go right back to you again. Okay, yeah. I just have one final question for the petition. Sure. If you would have an event like a bridal shower, can someone bring in one, they want to have a champagne toast, can they bring in champagne to have a champagne toast, or is that prohibited? Could someone bring in, I let's say, a, well, they had the anniversary party or? Like they'd have to have a, a one-day liquor license where we, by petitioning okay. the Board of Selectmen. Okay, but but they could do it. In other words, if, if someone wanted yeah, to have a shower response, there and have yeah, a champagne response. toast, they could come to the, uh, right. and get a, get a special one-day 
so that would enhance also yeah. some of the things. Okay. I think if you're going to gonna start pouring booze for profit, you have to have a license, yes. and yeah. it would have to be. You yeah, know, I don't maybe mean, you could get you know, a one I don't day mean consistently, event. but if there were one or two. Yeah. Yeah. Like a 50 it's, if they bring it in, it. it's different than if they serve it. Yeah. Right. Different. Yes. That's what I meant. Okay. Right. As long as it's not prohibited, they could. The, your, your guests. Could Does that mean I can sneak in a flask and pour it in my tea? <laughs> right. Hi, yeah. Mr. Nicanello. Yeah, I do have a, um, just a couple things. Number one, I know where I'm going to go for my 25th birthday party now. Thank you. Uh, and um, you missed that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I heard it. I just didn't think anybody would think it was credulous. Uh, and I, I guess I just have a thought about when they're ready to sell. I'm not sure. I know it's going to happen in the future, but um, um, it does happen. Um, no, nothing's forever. So I just, I was just wanted. To Pull the board to see if we can make it a condition that it, this stays with you guys. And I'm also concerned about the time of operation. As much as I appreciate right. uh, the, the abutters' yeah. uh, yeah. comment about that, you know, let's not have this slip through the cracks and become uh, right. a, 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 a nuisance to the neighborhood. You know. Right. Uh, no, I'm not saying you necessarily. No. Yeah. No. But you're not the only person that's ever going to own that property. I suspect. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So we have to look for the next, as we do all the time in, in our, our, our previews, to make sure that we have a longevity with what we want. And I'm sure you guys are going to do a great job, but who knows who's going to have it next. And they could abuse that condition. And I was just want to pull the board and see how they felt about it. But I would like to attach it that you folks have this right, and then when it's sold, it's going to have to come before us again if they want to do that. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. But, but it won't be a new variance. I, I think it would say that this specific, if in fact the board were to vote favorably, it would say this specific modification to the existing, this, this component of this modification only, is uh, subject to these owners only. Specific to these owners? Correct. Is specific to these owners only. Mr. Iga. But that a subsequent purchase, it would just have to return to the board for right. approval and reaffirmation as to what they're going to do. It's not certainly not meant to suggest that it would not be granted by a future board. I think it would be the intent, certainly, of my vote that a subsequent purchaser would be able to sure. obtain that particular um, modification. And if there was some other circumstance that would prevent them, then we could address it at that time. Uh, I, as I said before, I mean, I think it's a great idea. I think all the, the surrounding neighbors support it. I think uh, it offers a great synergy between themselves and the surrounding businesses and the library and everybody. Uh, they certainly, as Dick said, have plenty of room for parking. Um, and I do think they meet the criteria for the variance um, as stated by Attorney Tardif in his presentation. So. Um, I'm certainly prepared to support it, um, and I would be supporting it subject <coughs> to representations that we heard tonight, the 22 guests maximum, the uh, hours of operation <coughs> would be 12 to 6, seven days a week is fine with me. Um, the time, uh, the dates would be the Tuesday after October 12th weekend up until Memorial Day, and you guys can see how it goes. If you want to come back and you think you need to expand it, I'm always willing to listen to you coming back and we can talk about it again depending on how well you do and if you, we need to tweak it. That's all I have. Thank you. And Mr. Martin. Uh, I, I don't really have anything to add. I <clears throat> think it's a, um, a fine use and I have uh, no problems with uh, Mr. Igo's uh, time frames and so forth, I think that'll work fine and that would be a condition that uh, works for me. Well, I've got nothing to add. Uh, I think it's been said so perfectly by everybody. So is somebody prepared to make a motion at this point? Yes, I'd like to make a motion that we modify petition number 3534. Uh, yep, that's it. <coughs> um, specifically, condition three on page four I might suggest to the board that we add a uh, 3A instead of modifying 3. We could just we could make it 3A, or do you want to go with 3? 
I would just substitute three, to be honest with well, you. Well, when so we say substitute three, we're, we are going to leave that the dining room will be solely used for the guests during the period, but four. Didn't I correct in that? Fine, but so, except for this new except for tea parlor time period, um, right? Yeah. So, so we I can guess add we to that. If we leave the same language, it would say, however, um, between the months of the Tuesday after October 12th up until Memorial Day weekend, the public is will be invited. Mm -hmm. um, a maximum number of guests from the public would be 22. They could uh, have their hours of operation 12 to 6, seven days a week. And uh, as Tom suggested, that this condition, this modification to this condition would be uh, personal to this petitioner and a subsequent purchaser would have to return to the board for approval. And I think we should put that that approval should not be unreasonably withheld either. Because I think it's certainly my intent that anybody that purchased the property from you would be entitled to that as well. We'd just like to know what they're going to do. We, we know who you are. You came in. We don't know who you sell it to. We just, given the fact that it's technically in a residential district, I think uh, just exercising, uh, erring on the side of caution, should I say, um, that we just have somebody return. But it would really be just to uh, give them a stamp of approval and just to welcome them. But it's not for the operation of the B&B. It's just for this Just for that use. Condition. Right. <laughs> he's, an, he's an attorney, he gets paid, by the way. <laughs> okay. I'll the second that motion. Thank you, Mr. Martin. <laughs> Does the board care to have any discussion before proceeding to a vote? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion with the stated conditions, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, it carries unanimously. Thank you. A decision will be drafted by your counsel I suspect it will be on my iPad before midnight this evening. <coughs> Try. As soon as I get it, I'll look at it, make any modifications I feel are necessary to comply with what we discussed tonight. And I would ask that it, uh, that you recognize it's modifying both prior decisions. Both okay. prior. There are actually three decisions, but I don't think we have to get into the 77 decision at all. So. Uh, to, once that uh, gets done, it will then be uh, finalized by uh, Ms. Clark. She'll file it with the town clerk's office. 20 days must elapse. It is then considered uh, a final decision and a final modification of this uh, existing variance uh, with the provision that uh, nobody appeal, but I don't think anybody's going to appeal. So congratulations. Thank you for your efforts to uh, make this town a more viable place for people to visit and, and, and live, and we appreciate it. Thank you. You have a good night. Thank you very much. Yep. Second. You're, you're second. Did you? I second it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We lost a member. But that's all right. We can call the next case anyway. It's a petition number uh, 4814 Albert G. Rose concerning property located at uh, 22 and 22A J. O. Bird Lane. J. Bird. I apologize. You're not living over in the jail, are you? <laughs> no. J. J. Bird Lane, West Yarmouth. Uh, this evening, Mr. Rose is. Uh, uh, well, I'm sorry, that, con that concerns property located in the uh, zoning district R25. And this evening, Mr. Rose is seeking a special permit under our bylaws, section 104.3.5, subparagraph 2, to uh, subdivide 1825.1 square feet. <laughs> Gotta get that down there. <laughs> It's a math uh, thing. Square feet, foot lot from existing property and convey to a butter. Boy, this sounds like two neighbors getting along if I've ever heard it. Why don't you tell us all about your petition there, sir? All right, uh, good evening. Tris Weller uh, representing the uh, petitioner. Um, Mr. Rose owns uh, just under two acres of property, um, and he's uh, agreed to uh, transfer over to his uh, neighbor, Mr. Butera, uh, 1,800 roughly square feet to uh, help Mr. Butera square off his property. Um, that's pretty much uh, 
but it is. And there are some wetlands in there too, right? There are wetlands, yeah. yes. Yeah. So this is by A and R plan? Yes. Okay. Uh, any questions, uh, uh, Mr. Mutt? <clears throat> so there's a house on lot too, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Did that get relief or something? I was wondering, because the only frontage, I guess, is the end of Jaybird Lane for that, Jaybird right? Jaybird Lane, yeah, I believe there was a decision. Must have been a decision <coughs> at some point that, to yeah. allow the less than 50 feet, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, certainly lots plenty big enough, and uh, uh, it's well over the zoning requirements, so I don't even see how this, I'm not even sure why you're here. I don't see why it, it makes. Uh, actually, when I went to file the A&R, it surprised me that uh, that was the they case. I guess this is a fairly newer, yeah. And yeah. it, it may be because of that frontage thing, I guess. But, um, <clears throat> because you've got oh, plenty of room I on see. the. You're reducing the frontage on the abutting lot? Yeah. Uh, no, we're not no, reducing. No. The um, frontages aren't changing. Yeah. Uh, so that doesn't yeah. change, and you're just taking a very okay. tiny piece of a great big lot and okay. and eating it out, and uh, the, the frontage isn't becoming any less conforming. No. Um, the site is still conforming, so I, uh, I'm not even sure why you're here, but I, I certainly see no issues or problem with it. Well, I think the reason why they're here is, is how many square feet is this lot that you're taking from? Uh, from we're taking from uh, it's out? just under two acres. Yeah, this is the this is the we're we're, we're giving it to um, the abutter. The abutter is ninety one hundred square oh, oh, feet. Oh, I see. They're yeah. giving so this right. Yes. right. Yeah, so we're making right. the abutter's lot larger. So lot nine will become more conforming. Yes. Squaring it off. Yeah. Hmm. Now I'm always interested to why A and R plans have to come in to us. Mm. Whatever. You're here. Yeah. Yep. Let's get to it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Any questions, Mr. Igo? Yeah, none. Any questions, Mr. Nicanello? The only question I had is who's getting the land? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we try to help out everybody yeah, on this right. point, Ms. Diagon. <laughs> Any questions, Ms. Britta? No, fine. Uh, I think it's pretty self-evident what you're doing. Again, it's an A&R plan here, so we're going to vote on it. Uh, anybody in our audience here to speak in favor of this petition, please come to the microphone. Anybody in our audience care to speak in opposition to this petition? Please come to the mic. I just have a question. What's the attempt to do with the land? Why don't, why don't you come right over? Have you had a chance to look at the plan? Yeah, I'm confused. I don't know where it butts mine. I'm just wondering what you're going to do with it. Yeah, you, you got to get, I'm sorry, you have to get on the microphone. Right, because we really do have people right. that complain if they don't hear what you have to say. I'm just curious what the intent is with the land. Sir? David Manzi, 11 Corner Way. Thank you, Maryland, David. Where do you live? 11 Corner Marrow Way, West Charlotte. Okay. I, um, I yeah, it's, uh, it basically it squares off um, Mr. Butera's lot. His lot line, right side, goes off at an angle, which yeah. will be more perpendicular. And it will help if uh, he decides to do an addition, on right? An addition. It helps. Yeah, I don't want to stop anybody. I just didn't know if I'd have a house breathing down my neck. You know, that's uh, all. I, no, no. It's just it would, it would help with setbacks. No, I have no objections. I mean, I just I was just curious. That's all. Well, of course, of course. You, if it affects your property, you got a right to know. Of I'm, course. I'm, I'm done. That's all. I'm just thank you. Does anyone else care to speak regarding this petition? And again, thank you to you for coming out and yeah. being a participant in town government. So seeing nobody uh, caring to speak either in favor or against this petition, we now close it to the public uh, commentary on it. We open it up to board discussion, deliberations. Does any Is anybody prepared to make a motion? Sure. There is a health department. I, I know, but it ha again, it has nothing whatsoever to do with, with anything that's before us this evening, so I'm not going to uh, I'd, boil it. I'd move to uh, approve petition number 4814 as, requ as requested. Without condition, Mr. Without Mann. conditions. Is there a second, second to that motion? Okay. Mr. Nicanello seconds the motion to approve the petition without condition. To that motion, does the board care to have any discussion before moving it along to a decision? Hearing none, all those in favor of that motion with uh, no conditions, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, that carries unanimously. A decision will be drafted. Unlike the last fellow, I, I asked him to draft it. I'm not <laughs> going to ask you this evening. Mr. Weller, you've got enough no to do in these busy days. 
So we will uh, leave you of that responsibility. A decision will be drafted. It will be filed with the town clerk's office. 20 days must elapse before that's considered final. There being no appeals from that decision, you then need to take it and record it down at the registry of deeds and return proof of recordation back to our board secretary. Thanks. You've been down the, uh, this isn't your first rodeo, yeah. is it? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Take care. Excuse me one second, everybody. Come on, don't fall. I just need to make sure you are alive for at least another petition. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you're in charge. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait, now we'd admit the neck and the logo. <laughs> What's he doing back, back there? The, uh, back in the control. All right, so that brings us to our next and last petition this evening, that of. <laughs> that of petition. <laughs> Uh, 4815 Adrian Aguilla. Am I pronouncing that right? Aguila? I, I, I'm sorry, I'm horrible on name. Please, please forgive me. Okay. And it's concerning property located at 24 Fillmore Road, West Yarmouth, Mass. Property in the zoning district R40. Our applicant so seeks what? a special permit under section 407 of the zoning bylaws for a family related apartment and or a variance from section 203.5 footnote C for relief from minimum lot size for two family dwelling. Oh boy. Can we just deal with one of these last yeah. Yeah. There's a big difference between two family dwellings and, and family related yeah, apartments. So we, I think you're gonna need to specify for us which are you asking to do? Um, probably for a um, family related apartment. And who's going to move into that family really? My uh, sister-in-law. Okay. And uh, is, is the apartment already constructed within the interior of the home? Yes, it is. Is there a, kit, a separate kitchen facility and the like? Yes, it is. And that's shown on floor plans that you filed with us tonight? Yes, I have additional pictures here. I don't know if you want to see it. Okay. All right. Well, some of our board, no, ha, 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 look at you come up. Ah, you. oh, you're so good. Thank you. All right. So what we're gonna do now, while you're passing this out to everybody, thank you, is we are required to receive, and you can go back, I just need to say this for people, for our record, that we receive any submissions as exhibits, which must be marked under state law now as exhibits. I don't know why they think we're a court here. Oh. But. So we're marking it as a collective exhibit one, okay? I need to make that known on our record. So why don't you tell us what you'd like to have us pay attention to in this packet that you've just provided to us. Oh, I see. You've got a floor plan. Yeah. Oh, we're going to ask all the questions we want, but what we're going to do is uh, just, uh, uh, I'd be happy to start with you tonight. You know, we don't always have to start at the end, so. <laughs> Mr. Igo, why don't we uh, uh, let you go first? <laughs> just don't forget it. Well, I, I guess the, the first question I have is looking at this picture right here, is that the, what door is that? Uh, that door goes to the, to the office and to the basement. Okay, where's the door that goes into the family related apartment? Uh, it can be there, that one, or is one more entrance in the front door? Well, we know, we need to know that it, under the bylaw, it's supposed to have its own separate entrance. Do you have its own separate entrance? Yes. Bar? Do you have a it picture is. of the separate entrance? Uh, basically, is this one here? That one. Yeah. That's going to be the entrance. Yes, and also is another entrance in the front door. You can see one going to that upstairs. That door down that you're showing right there. Where does that door go right there? Uh, this one is going to the basement okay. apartment. Right okay. here. Okay. And, and the top the one is going to the main living the main area. House. Yes. Okay. okay. And, and and is there a man door exit on the? on the, from the basement other than this door that you've just shown us? Yes, it's two more the doors. The outside? To the outside is, yes, is this one here. I am completely. So basically it's three doors to the outside. Where are they? Where are the three doors? 
is one here. One there. Yeah. Where's the second? One more here. And where's the third one? In the third one, it's in the back there. In the back here. Do you yes. have a picture of that? Uh, in the no. Back. Maybe on the drawing. Use the back of the house right there on the field guide. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see a slider in the back. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe that's the, maybe that's sure. not the. Yeah, yeah, you know, before no, we get, before we before we go too far on this petition, yeah, yeah. do you have anything that's going to show us the square footage of this apartment? Mm -hmm. Because we have to have a dimensional layout of the apartment showing square footage. Yes. Now, can we yes. get it off the field card, maybe? Yes, I, I think know. it's in the original. Very beautiful home, by the way. Yeah. Very Thank nice. you so much. Yes. From the back. Oh. The small thing. Oh, what have I overlooked that? That's why I found that. You don't have one, you can use mine. I'm sure it's here, Tom. Let me just have it take a second. Oh, okay. So there is a square footage yeah. here. There is a detailed floor plan. I thought he was relying, I'm sorry, I thought you were relying solely on the packet of information you gave to us. And so I've been through this, and I'm sure I'm just overlooking it, but may I look at yours, sure. please, so I can pass it up and down. Do you have one, yeah. Mr. Igo? Do you have one, Mr. Martin? The floor plan, yeah. You do? What do you see me? Yeah. I've memorized mine. You can take it. Main entrance, home. This is it, right? Oh, yeah, there you go, yeah. Okay. Oh, this is 861 square feet. Right. What does yeah. yours say, Mr. Chairman? Does yours say 861 at the bottom? Yeah. Okay. You got so, so, so I'm looking at a dot. Is this uh, the floor plan of the apartment? Yes, it is. It's 861 square feet. Um, That's 730, right? So, uh, you know, that, okay, that exceeds. Right here. here it is. Uh, the apartment unit can have 722 square feet and has one bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, living room. This is from the original petition, 2008. So how did no. it get from 722? I, 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 can you come up for a I, moment? Yes. Would you come up for a moment? I'm going to ask you to take a look at this document that I'm holding yes, in my hand. I need the, uh, is that the, maybe, wait, uh, let me put a question you know? to you if I could. Okay. Is that the floor plan for this apartment? Yes. Okay, thank you. Now you'd have to go back to your microphone uh, in that, I, so everybody at home. So I, I, have, I have a question too, if I could. Um, <clears throat> is the entire lower level apartment, I'll call it, is that all, all the entire lower level finished, the basement level? Is yes, it all it living is space? All finished, yes. Okay, so according to what I see on the field card, that would show that as being at 1,040 square feet, um, if that makes sense. <clears throat> Well, that's where I'm confused. I, I well, can't even I, figure out where this family apartment is. It shows the first floor is. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, well, I, sh I don't know what they call the first floor and what they <laughs> call the basement in terms of that office room. Uh, but uh, the first floor is 1,040 square feet as per the field card, and then it gives an effective area for the basement finished of 468 square feet, but it's appearing to me. And I, I guess the so-called office uh, room is part of the basement, and that's finished, and the rest of the basement is finished, meaning that it would be at least 1,040 square feet. Uh, the office, the front office is not part of the basement apartment. So that's not part of the apartment? Yes, it's okay. separate. <clears throat> so that minus is some. Um, How do you get to it? Is there a separate entrance to that office? But you're saying that's really... That's one of the entrances to the apartment. Exactly, yes. To the, the front. Yes. To the office, which is not part of the apartment. So it's like an emergency access. Unit. Yes, it is, yes. How many bedrooms are in the family-related apartment? Only one. I, again, I, I'm not looking at a floor plan for the family-related apartment, and I really, where am I? This, this one. So you got an office. Well, I'm sure it's showing th essentially three bedrooms, so. Uh, uh, an, an office, a bedroom, and an office. Yeah, it's showing offices, which probably aren't offices. Okay, <laughs> uh, but that's that's yeah, that's not a family-related apartment. No. Okay. No, and, so and I'm, I'm, I'm get, looking I'm at what at least a thousand forty square feet here, and and what could definitively be used is 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 up to a three-bedroom. Yeah. 
I, I, you know, I, I, I've got problems with this personally, but uh, I don't see anybody probably, in there. Probably you see this draw is a little more easy to understand. If you'd like to pass something else up. I think it's in the original package. Oh, it's in the packet? Yes. All right, let me take a look. Uh, this is the original. The one saying you gave us. I don't remember saying that. Okay, again, I have to ask you to step back. I don't have that. Yeah, I don't have this. <coughs> An it certainly is a floor plan, but. Another question I would have on the sketch addendum is the, uh, the so-called basement is showing both a kitchen and a kitchenette as well. Um, are there two kitchens there on the lower level now? No, it's only one. Okay, so w why does it say kitchenette? Excuse me? But this, this plan here, the sketch addendum showing the two f floor plans under basement shows both a kitchenette and a kitchen on that level, Have as well as a kitchen up above. No, I never saw that. That may be wrong. Yeah. Could you hold this? Could you just this one here. I don't, See, I don't have that either. Yeah, well, uh, you just passed it up to me. I, I don't yeah. know where it came from, but that's it's certainly a much better floor plan that's than any of this. That's attached yeah. yeah. in the new packet. Yeah, I think it's Oh, in the new wrong. packet. Yeah. yeah. from the building department. I mean, I, I, I'm so, so this this it's whole lower level one kitchen in the in the basement. There department. is only one kitchen. Only there. One, okay. Yes. And this is all constructed and was constructed when? In 1976, I guess. So this basement apartment has been there yes, illegally since 1976. Exactly. No, no, it, it has prior. Oh, it has prior relief. I, yes. I don't have is that document. I don't have that. That's what it says. It was 720. 20 square foot back in uh, 2008. I don't know. Because he was, he was adding a whole basement. The whole basement was 1,000 square feet. Okay, well, I don't have this. This is, 34. This is not contained within my file or the packet. That's interesting. Uh, I, right. got, I think so, we have a mistake on the, this. This is, this is actually 30 Fillmore. <laughs> and the petitioner is 24 Fillmore. Oh. Because it shows that somebody else got one. Right. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, so well, we, we don't make decisions based upon people who, you know, right. building something non-conforming and it's been there a long time. Mm. I, may I mark, keep this and mark this as another exhibit so I may pass it up and down? Sure. All right. Because we do not have this document, but it certainly gives better indication this as is, to this what. This is family related. This is no measurement. You're planning. No, but then the measurements are over here, so you can extrapolate these two together to get the actual square footage. And if I just accept the square footage here, no, no. it's 861 square feet, which means we're going to have to reduce this. Or right. and, 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 and is there, I'm, I want you to look at this one now, mm -hmm. is there a rear entrance? Yes, it is. Okay, it's not depicted here. Can you tell me where it is? Yes, I do. I'll let you come up and draw it, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go right there and draw it if you would. You seem like a very nice man. And, uh, yes, I understand that's the front. Would you just draw in the rear? One more exit right here. So there's no rear? one more exit right here. That's what I'm asking. Yes. And that's at ground level? Yes. Is, is it a dugout or a bilco? Is it a bilco? Is it covered with a bilco? Yes. A Bilco cover? Yes. I, I don't think that constitutes mm -hmm. a fire exit. Okay, oh, okay, you go back, thank you. So what's being suggested is that there's now another exit right here on the rear of the building where the bedroom is. It's kind of pointed out and shows here on that. It's on the new packet. Okay. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah but it, I'm being told it's a Bilco, right? right. It's, co it's covered yeah. by a metal Bilco, right? So what does somebody yes. do if there's a fire? Right. I found out uh, the entrance. I got a picture here. This is the uh, back oh. entrance. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay. Nice. And that's just a straight walk out <coughs> from that bedroom? Yes. You don't have to go upstairs or anything to get no. there. All right. It's independent. Could you please show that to Susan and 
I'll show it when I get on this way. Yeah. I'm still confused. Yeah. Is that a ramp, too? Is that a ramp? Yeah. yeah. But that's the ben a rear entrance to the base of the apartment. Does that go into the apartment or does that yes. go into the office? No, it goes down and straight into the apartment. Okay, so you walk downstairs? Well, you walk down those stairs? Yes. I mean, I, I, so this was, was this, so this is a mess. Done by the building department. Looked at the Yeah, that's the building department. Yeah. All right. So what what do we have here? Sixty one square feet above what he's supposed to have. Uh, if the measurement is right. We don't know the they have measurement. a square footage on that? Well, I, I don't think that's right because right. according to the field card, the lower level, not including that office, right. <clears throat> is 1,040 square feet, mm -hmm. the same as the upper level. I agree. Yeah. So, so what I, I, I got to tell you, what I'm going to need to, to con, is consider this petition favorably. Mm -hmm. On its face, it looks yeah, fine by me, but I'm not satisfied at all that we don't have a floor plan that sets out the proper dimensions and allows for a precise calculation of square footage of what you want included in this family-related apartment. Mm -hmm. How come you're here tonight, just out of curiosity? Oh. Well, he was they, told, he they was told they to come here. You were told you needed that because of the second kitchen, which had never been approved. Exactly, yes, okay. for the second kitchen. So you didn't get fined or cited or anything, did you? No. Okay. No, no. All right. So, do you understand what my um, what our confusion is? Mm -hmm. This this is a wonderful floor plan, but it has nothing on it, mm -hmm. and this is something that doesn't seem to comport with the proper calculation already made of this mm -hmm. basement apartment. And quite frankly, I'm still confused as to what you do and don't want in the basement apartment. Mm -hmm. Is the home office that I'm looking at here to be part of the no, it's basement? Not. So just the family room, work office, kitchen, and bedroom, exactly. right? Exactly, Okay, so I'm concerned that we're gonna build two bedrooms down there, okay? And that's not what a family-related apartment should mm -hmm. be. So there, there are ways, perhaps, of dealing with that. Remove, one, remove or open one of the walls there. I mean, that's how we've done it in the past. Uh, make it like the entrance to your kitchen. I don't know why you need a separate wall there if you're down the basement with a work area. You could make it part of your family room, but I'm, uh, I'm I'd also like to see some pictures of uh, how that's set up. I don't see any pictures of the office. Yeah, I just see the kitchen. Yeah. So I mean, I think we can, can you know, if, if you're interested, we could take a vote this evening. But if that's the case, I'm telling you now, I'm going to vote to deny the relief. If you could present the information that I think would be helpful to the board to assure that we know what we're talking about then I might well consider my position and look favorably upon it. So I'm only speaking of one person. Can I just pull the board for a moment? Is anybody else prepared to vote on this with, at, affirmatively this evening? No. No. <clears throat> so you're going to lose <laughs> if it's brought to a vote tonight. But I think you can win if you can give us what we need. And what we need it's something as precise as this drawing, mm -hmm. not these hand scratches that I see, okay? Let's get some precision to it. It's only graph paper. We can do that pretty simple. You can take a copy of this tomorrow and, 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 and use the same paper. But then we need actual measurements, mm -hmm. and I want us, I agree with Mr. Martin, I want to see pictures of each one of these rooms from the family room looking at the work room. Because I, I don't know why we would need a work office uh, in a family-related apartment. But you know, if there's a need, so be it. But we're not going to make it into a bedroom. So that wall might well have to be opened up to gain approval, OK? So, uh, so couldn't he just take this, because this is it from the town? And Unfortunately, I've received it. Oh, and stamped it. No, I can't. I can't. You know, I wish I could do that, but I can't. You can get a copy of it tonight. We'll get you a copy tonight, yeah? Okay. We can do that. Oh, can we keep the copy? Because this says it's applicant's copy. Yeah, the power I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what. If we can get a copy of this, I'll, I'll substitute the copy as the exhibit and return Just this because this has an original signature on it. Right? Yeah, okay. All right, that's fair. Um, so hang so around. Don't leave when we're done here. Right? So please, we're, please. We're instructing him to go and fill in the... I, I got to defer to you. Do you want us to vote knowing we're going to deny it? Or would you like to come back with the information that we need to I perhaps prove it? I come back. Yes. All right. So then what we're going to have to ask you to do is uh, to sign an agreement to continue this petition to a date that Ms. Clark's going to give us. You need to return with a definitive and 
well thought out drafting of a floor plan mm -hmm. with the precise square footage calculation. Uh, this picture here showed a precise measurement. It, from, uh, it was from the appraisal three years ago. Three years I ago? Think it's, yes. Well, it doesn't define the whole where your apartment's going to be. It has the whole dimension for the whole floor. Oh, okay. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. The, if the home office is not included in the apartment, then that dimension is included here. So we can't get the calculation, mm -hmm. which is the apartment. And, 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 and also, no and also so you understand, <laughs> you might want to talk to the town because the field card is a pro uh, perhaps wrong. Mm -hmm. The field card says that there's mm -hmm. over a thousand square feet down yeah. there. Right. Okay. And mm -hmm. if you're showing us the entire basement here, mm -hmm. that and you're saying it's 861, there's a discrepancy there. Right. So we need you to give to us a floor plan with precise measurements and a calculation of square footage. Also, please, when you do it, show on what you're giving to us with the location of the rear exit uh, from this family-related basement apartment, okay. okay? Because we're concerned about if there's a fire in the house, can people get out, Mr. okay? Chairman, I also mm -hmm. um, could we also get an explanation for the ramp? Is, I, I, is there a handicapped person living in the house? Uh, my stepdaughter. She uh, but she's fine now. Okay. Yeah, she. Okay. Yeah, and I would just add to that too, and you know, like the sketch addendum, that's showing things. It's showing two bedrooms and everything else. So that's you know, we need to see. We want to see what the yeah. We need to see how it's going to be, um, how it's going to work for an in-law. And I would also say that I think your petition should be for a family-related in-law, as opposed to a two-family, because I don't think a two-family would be well received. The size of the lot. Uh, 15,000 feet or so. Two family ain't gonna cut it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're not gonna get relief for two family from this board, I suspect. Okay. We just turned one down two weeks yeah. ago and pretty clear we want double the size lot in that zoning district. You're in an R20, you're in an R40. Right. You need 80,000 square feet for you two, need two acres. Yep. And we're not gonna grant that, I can mm -hmm. guarantee you. So, with your permission, <coughs> We, and your signature of an extension agreement will continue sure. the matter with the hopes that you can provide the right document at that time for us to all be un understanding what it is you're looking for. And do we have a date? August 22nd. August 22nd. Would that be a good date for you? Yes, I think so. I'm in town. Does everybody else think that's a good date for mm -hmm. them? Yep. We're all in town. And, and I'd say look at the family related apartment criteria and try and abide by that as uh, as possible. As, uh, yeah. Completely if you can. Yeah. 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 So I want to know precisely what's in it and what its size is before yeah. I can agree to it. Okay. So this is agreeing. This is an agreement between you and this board that we're continuing it over to August 22nd, 19. Okay. Okay. Do you feel comfortable signing that? Yes, sir. Okay. If you'd sign that, please, sir. We. Uh, We'll move to adjourn and get the heck out of Dodge. Yeah, wait, wait, it's, yes, sir, right, your applicant petitioner, yeah? Good job. Thank you very much. I'll make the motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, well, wait a minute, we need to just well, vote, we need, we need to act continue. on this. That's fine. If, I, again, I have to ask you to go back just because people might want to hear what you have to say. So is there a motion uh, to uh, uh, permit the continuance of this I'll make as the motion, the petitioner's Mr. Chairman. request? Second. Mr. Nicanello makes. Mr. Martin seconds. Everybody's so quick to get this one done. Uh, to continue <laughs> to. Before we take a vote, can I ask the petitioner one question? Sure, of course. Sure. You, you understand everything that, we, that you need? Yes, I do. We, we want to get you the relief you're looking for, but we got to have the ability to do that, okay? Okay. Uh, Great. So on that motion made by Mr. Nicanello, seconded by Mr. Martin, all those in favor of the motion to continue to August 22, 2019, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, that carries unanimously. We'll see you that night. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You don't want to leave quite yet because you want to get a copy of this uh, okay. or, or substitute a copy for the original here. All right, with that, can we move to uh, yeah, adjourn? Yeah, right my motion still stands to adjourn, Mr. Chair. Okay, great, and that's all been voted on affirmatively by this body, I believe, yes? Yeah, okay. We are now adjourned, if we can adjourn the video.